A very busy day in court. That and much more to break down with our political, our spotlight politics team, the name of which I almost forgot you guys. Joining us with more are Amanda Venicky, Heather Sharon, and Paris Schutz. Uh, so let's start in court. Four people who are charged with conspiring to bribe former Speaker of the Illinois House, Michael Madigan, to benefit uh, Commonwealth Edison appeared in court today. Paris, who are these four? What are the charges? Well, the thing you have to know about these four, long story short, is they're former top executives and or lobbyists for ComEd. And the charges revolve uh, around alleged schemes to give jobs and contracts to those very close to Mike Madigan. And a lot of those jobs where you didn't really have to even go to work or do anything in exchange for Madigan helping push legislation that benefited ComEd, a couple of different bills that benefited ComEd's bottom line, but that caused uh, ratepayers in Chicago to pay more. And clearly here, um, as some of the court's reporters at the newspapers today indicated, the hearing indicated that there might be more defendants in this case, that there might be more indictments coming down the road. You're looking at a person uh, right now who is mentioned in the indictment, but is not charged with any wrongdoing. So um, it, the odds makers are wondering if that's who they might be talking about when you hear uh, prosecuting and defense attorneys say they expect more indictments to come. Well, that's right. And of course, Madigan is clearly the big fish here. Amanda, um, does this mean prosecutors don't have enough to uh, to charge or indict Madigan yet? Is there the expectation that the four we just saw will flip on him? We, we don't quite know what will go on thus far. They all have been quite loyal, all have pleaded not guilty. And why you don't see Madigan there right now is because he not only has not been charged, but he has vociferously denied any part in wrongdoing. He said if there was a bribe, he certainly did not know about it. Um, what we know from court today is just that there were um, defense attorneys talked about intimations of a superseding indictment. The U.S. Attorney's Office isn't saying what that means. One would presume that yes, if they had enough to get Madigan, they would certainly have done so. But a superseding indictment that sure sounds, it doesn't necessarily have to be big. It could be just adding charges to those four. But yes, um, it very might well lead to Madigan's feet. And the Tribune also reporting that several former House Democratic legislators, so those who clearly would have known Madigan and how he operates, have either talked to the grand jury or have talked to the U.S. Attorney's Office recently and that they were asked about Madigan. So it does certainly seem like things are edging closer, though again, the former speaker says he didn't do anything wrong. Stay tuned. Um, Ex-Alderman Ricardo Munoz, he was also arraigned today. Heather, what happened today? And remind us uh, of what he's charged with. Well, Alderman Munoz pled not guilty to 16 counts of wire fraud and money laundering. And this dates back to alleged conduct from 2016 to 2019, when Alderman Munoz was both the chairman and the treasurer of the city council's progressive caucus. He is accused of taking more than $38,000 from the caucus's political action committee account and using it to buy all sorts of things, including trips and jewelry and clothes and to pay a relative's college tuition. That's entirely illegal. You can't use political funds for personal purposes. We have a whole range of Illinois politicians who have gone to jail for doing just that. But Alderman Munoz says he is not guilty and he is due back in court next month as the trial progresses. Alderman Patrick Daly Thompson was charged Friday with income tax evasion and lying to investigators, which he denies. He is scheduled to be arraigned on May 13th. Here's what the mayor said today about whether he should step down. Having been a, a former federal prosecutor um, and prosecuted public uh, corruption cases and elected officials, it's very hard <clears throat> for them to maintain their focus on their public life when they're facing um, such pressure um, in their private life. And again, Heather, unlike Alderman Burke, who, you know, toned down since his indictment a couple of years ago, Alderman Thompson still vocal. 
He is. He participated in a committee hearing at the very moment that the indictment was unsealed, and he was present, although he did not participate in a hearing uh, yesterday on summer violence and what the city should do to prevent that from happening. Uh, he says he is innocent. He says it was an innocent error that he made on his taxes and that he will fight it. And he reminded us all that in this case, what he's charged with does not relate to his official duties as aldermen, but the mayor campaigned on rooting out corruption in all forms at City Hall, which was why I was interested to hear her stop just short of calling um, on Alderman Thompson to resign. And, and remember that Thompson's indictment is part of a gigantic investigation into that bank in Bridgeport, Washington Federal, and there are 10 other defendants. They might know stuff about uh, Thompson. He might know stuff about them. So we'll see how this dance goes as that case develops. Now, additionally, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability's chief administrator resigned today. Here's how the mayor reacted. I've made no secret of the fact that I've been extraordinarily unhappy other with the way that they've handled a number of things, not the least of which is um, taking over 18 months um, to move forward on an investigation regarding Anjanette Young. And a lot of that time, nothing happened. Now, Heather, tell us what we know. You know, is there the thought that she was pushed out over the Anjanette Young case? Dealing with well, chill on the fifth floor? Go ahead. Yeah, I asked the mayor exactly that. I asked her point blank, did you request her resignation? And she said that she did not. But the mayor has been highly critical of her agency under her leadership. She was also frustrated last week when COPA called for the officer who shot Anthony Alvarez in Portage Park to be stripped of his police powers. Apparently, they put out that to the press before informing Superintendent Brown, which rankled the mayor. And that could have been just sort of the straw that broke the Camel's back at a very uh, already tense relationship uh, between the mayor and the lead agency charged with investigating police misconduct. What this means for the investigation into the shooting of Anthony Alvarez, as well as 13 year old Adam Toledo, uh, is probably more delays, to be quite frank. Now, finally, Kim Fox uh, loses a top lieutenant over one of her prosecutors' misstatements uh, mm -hmm. around the Adam Toledo video. Amanda, or sorry, Paris, I'm actually going to go to you. You know, the prosecutor is still working there, but, you know, this top lieutenant is leaving. Fox says that the checks and balances in her office did not work. What could be the political fallout for her with this case? My guess would be not much, Brandis, because uh, remember the Jesse Smollett case and the mistakes that were made there and confusion over whether she had recused herself or not. She didn't pay a political price for it. She still won re-election pretty handily. So, the, you know, the views of the state's attorney in Cook County send to, tend to center around ideologically whether or not you support the approach uh, to prosecuting. So, I mean, th this is kind of like a similar little hiccup here, maybe a smaller hiccup than S Smollett was. But judging well, by what so happened there, I, I wouldn't the see a huge election. political fallout at this point. Yeah, and, and it's just so far out from the next election that by by the time if she is to run again, there who knows what we will be talking about at that point. I do think what we have heard thus far about what is going on, I personally have not talked to Fox myself or have the opportunity to interview her on this, but is not why she had not watched the video of a case that was clearly uh, commanding the public's attention and she knew was going to be a big deal. When this uh, assistant state's attorney made those uh, statements in court on April 10th, she had not yet watched the video. It wasn't until it became her office became part of the media kerfuffle that she actually watched that um, really, I mean, horrifying video to, to see. Um, so some other politics, the hearing on renaming Lakeshore Drive after uh, DuSable, that exploded on Monday. Heather, you reported uh, that the committee meeting was raucous and profane. What happened? It was. Uh, Alderman David Moore has been trying for almost 18 months to rename Outer Lakeshore Drive for Jean-Baptiste Pointe du Sable, Chicago's first non-Indigenous settler. And at that hearing, the city's transportation department came out with new ordinance they said would do that, but he didn't believe them. And he erupted in anger, saying that they had sandbagged him and basically introduced a last-minute change. 
So at the end of the hearing, which lasted for more than three hours, uh, they passed that the original proposal, which does not legally define Outer Lakeshore Drive and is opposed by Mayor Lightfoot. So at this point, it's really anyone's guess what happens before the next city council meeting the, it, later this month. But something will have to be done to make this change legal because as we discovered during that hearing, the city's code doesn't define outer Lakeshore Drive, although everybody who lives here knows exactly where it is. Um, aldermen, violence prevention advocates, uh, they also want the city to use federal relief funds to rethink the summer approach. Paris, shootings are already up this year. What are they proposing? Well, they're proposing a lot more money for um, violence intervention programs. You know, the mediators that go in as disputes heat up and, and try to get in there before they turn violent. But, you know, the issue is that there are more people with guns. More people are carrying more more youth are caring, and everybody I talk to on this issue says the same thing, that there still isn't enough resources for over the overarching services that are needed, like mental health, like job training. So the, gang, the violence prevention is one piece of it, but until, as we all know, I mean, violence has, has a million different causes. Until those root problems aren't addressed, it's, it, I'm very skeptical that throwing more money at something like violence prevention can really bring those numbers down for the summer. Now, before we run out of time, we know that CPS is uh, losing another CEO after years of, of sort of the back and forth with the Chicago Teachers Union. Uh, Janice Jackson is leaving. Heather, Dr. Jackson's two top administrators are also leaving, uh, and we've heard some other announcements of folks uh, leaving in appointments in, in recent months. Is this a brain drain for the mayor? It, it's not. A, a normal amount of turmoil and I asked the mayor about that today I said is this an indication that there are significant problems at your city hall and she said look it's been a difficult year for everybody everybody's taking stock of their lives and what they want from their lives and and maybe making decisions to, to change however the mayor will have to fill several high-profile positions just in the coming weeks uh, today we did get an announcement that Celia may will become the city's corporation council if she's confirmed by the city council she would be the first latina to hold that post uh, another indication that diversity is very important to mayor lightfoot okay and lots more positions uh, to watch as she fills them up thanks to the spotlight politics team amanda vinicky heather sharon and paris schutz